Hey everybody out there, my name is Drynix and this is Super Galaxy Squadron EX. $9.99, it released from Early Access on February 18th, 2016, aka last Friday. It's a fast-paced vertical shoot-em-up, but it's an expansion of the original Super Galaxy Squadron. Now, that is included in this one, but this one has upgraded graphics, a couple of new features, and overall a better sense of polish. But with so many shoot-em-ups on Steam, can Super Galaxy Squadron EX find something unique to bring to the table and make it worthy of a purchase? That's what I'm here to answer, but before I begin, this key was obtained from Evolve PR for the purposes of review. That won't change my opinion in the end, but you should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, I you know? Now, a lot of the basics of the genre are here. This is a shoot 'em up therefore there will be ships on screen, you shoot them until they're dead. Although things are a tiny bit different from others in the genre here. In particular, you have a health bar as you see on the left hand side of the screen. Now, a lot of shoot 'em ups, it's one shot, you're dead, or maybe you have a shield that will tank one shot, but here you can take multiple shots depending on the difficulty. Now, you have three weapons for each ship a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, and a hyper shot. In this case, the primary weapon is the oscillating bullets, and the secondary weapon are the lasers. Now the thing is these weapons are connected together because you fire them with the same button, but you upgrade them differently as you see in the top right corner of the screen. Currently I have two primary shot upgrades and one secondary shot upgrades. This can add more bullets, a little bit more power, or more lasers in the case of the secondary shot. Now. One of the things I like about the power-up system in the game is the fact that when you get hit, you have a random chance to drop a power-up, whether it be one power-up, two power-ups, three, or zero. The thing about that is, is that when you drop it, you may not be able to get it right away because there's a barrage of bullets coming towards you, and you may have to, you know, go to the other side of the screen or abandon it altogether. There's a risk and reward that plays very well there. The power-up stays on the field for a reasonable amount of time, but not too long so that you can just get it at your leisure, so you have to get to it rather quickly. When things get really crazy, you have your hyper shot, which will be able to take out most bullets on screen in most cases, but is unique to each ship. For example, I just got a lot more lasers here, but those lasers were able to take care of a lot of bullets and projectiles. You also have a combo meter in the top left corner of the screen. As you kill enemies, that combo meter will go up, but it is time-based, so if you don't kill an enemy for a specific amount of time, it will start to drain. One of the newest additions to the game is the overdrive mode. When you get a 10x combo, you can activate an overdrive mode from what I see, and that means you fire faster, you fire with a little bit more power, and just a lot more points can be earned from this mode in question. One of the strengths of the game is its variety of ships. You have 14 ships in all, and they all have different primary and secondary weapons. Some of them will have blades that you'll have to get close to the enemy with. Some of them will have lasers that will be able to take care of projectiles very well, but don't do necessarily a good job of dealing direct damage. There's a good variety here, and they all require different strategies in the end. My personal favorite ship was Magenta with high armor and a little bit of a speed problem, but with the bullets that were coming down screen, I felt like I could react to them in a reasonable manner. The game has a good set of controls behind it for both the keyboard and the controller. These controls are responsive, but they're not too loose so that you can actually get through these bullet barrages without actually taking any damage. Now remember, this is tied to your agility stat, so the slower that your ship moves, the faster you'll need to react when bullets are coming down screen. A high agility ship is able to move very fast, but sometimes moving a little bit too fast can be a problem because, well, you'll run right into a bullet. The game definitely has the fun factor to it. It can throw anything and everything at you, including the kitchen sink. Being able to dodge between the bullets or being able to activate your hyper at the right time, getting rid of the bullets, is not only fun, it's exhilarating. Now shmups aren't exactly known for their story elements and there's not a lot different in terms of the actual plot for Super Galaxy Squadron. There are aliens, you're part of this galactic force, you've seen these plot threads before. On the flip side, the narrative here is presented very well. The cutscenes have a crisp art to them, and the voice acting does a very good job of hitting that galactic commander kind of vibe, like in this cutscene. Our fleets have taken a hold of both fronts, and HQ wants to keep this momentum going as long as possible. Forces in the Kale, and all other vessels in the area, advance into YZ Seti. Forces in Barnard, advance into UV Seti. Expect heavy resistance, but you have the Super Galaxy Squadron backing you up. 
Control out. As I mentioned, the game is a remastered version of Super Galaxy Squadron, which you can still play because the game comes with the EX version. Now, I played a little bit of the original Super Galaxy Squadron to understand what went into this remastered version, and lo and behold, there is more than just graphical fidelity improved in the EX version of the game. The EX version of the game takes everything the original had and cranks it up a little bit. A little bit more happening on screen, a little bit more bullets for you to dodge, and a little bit more color for you to take in. It also messed with gameplay mechanics a little bit. Take a guess what ship I'm using. That's right, it's the one that I was using in the original clip for the original Super Galaxy Squadron. So things have changed just a tiny bit. I also like the UI in particular. The bars being right next to the action makes it easy for me to just glance over and see what my status is without taking my attention away from the screen. Now granted, there's a lot of space that's unused on the left and right side, but I can understand it in this case because it is a vertical shooter. What was smartly done here was the actual aesthetic in terms of gameplay. The bullets, the power-ups, everything against the background starts to pop out so that you can easily see what's going on on screen, even when it's chaotic. I never had a situation where I felt that a bullet came out of nowhere that I wasn't paying attention to because of the fact that it blended in. Everything here is crisp, I can see everything going on, even though there's a lot of shit going on screen right now. The game also has some nice touches in the fact that I can actually change my ship in the arcade mode between levels at the start of a stage. The game is also accessible thanks to its difficulty settings. The casual setting, yeah, a lot of people who don't necessarily play shmups will find a nice little, you know, relaxing time here. Veteran for those people who maybe play shmups once in a while, and hell for those people who really like to be masochistic in nature or like the bullet hell genre as a whole. On top of that, there is a hardcore setting, which takes away health drops and checkpoints within a stage. Alright, since the start of this video, I've basically heaped nothing but praise for this game, but there's gotta be some weaknesses, right? Yeah, there are. Now, the bullet patterns in this game are a little bit strange. There's not many of them. You do get a variety of enemy types, but in terms of the main bullet patterns, you get about three to four on the main portions of the game. This changes a little bit with the boss monsters because they just throw more at you, but that's how the game handles it. It just throws more and more and more at you so you have to dodge more stuff. There isn't creative bullet patterns in terms of like boomerangs or anything along that line. This is particularly noticeable in things like the endless mode, which is basically go as far as you can without dying, but it's supposed to be a random selection of enemies and bullets. The thing is, you'll see these spikes, you'll see those sort of donuts that are flying towards you. Really, in the end, you'll feel like the game is just throwing the same thing at you over and over again, only throwing more at you. The game is also lacking in terms of the options menu. It's great that I can turn screen shake and rumble on and off, but I wanted a music slider. I also wanted the ability to rebind the controls. These are pretty standard for the PC platform, and I was surprised that they were missing from this game. In addition, with the game coming out of early access, I do have to question why there's a coming soon portion that tells me that there's still development to be done. But overall, those weaknesses don't compare to the strengths of the game. There's a lot of variety in terms of the ships here, there's a lot of good action that you can get out of the game, and the endless mode in particular, I could find myself just playing it over and over again, trying to find the best way to get through these bullet barrages. It is a good shoot 'em up. It's not the greatest of shoot 'em ups. It's not an Ikaruga. It's not things like Roche Fusion, but it is solid in many ways and is definitely worth the $10 price tag. All right, this is Dragnik signing out. I hope you got an idea of what Super Galaxy Squadron has to offer, and I will see you all later. Keep on gaming. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, hit that like button. Maybe share it with a friend. I write an appropriate Steam review that you can find in the description below for games on Steam, and I'll respond to any comments below regarding questions about the game and feedback about the video. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button, and you can check out my last video in the top left and a related video in the top right. You want to keep this channel running as well? Then consider supporting my work on Patreon, which you can find in the description below, along with my Google Plus page, Facebook group, and Twitter handle. This is Dragnik signing out, and keep on gaming.